Now I'll call upon uh, Mr. Uh, Jagdish Sir Ahuja. He will be talking on stock market and union budget. Uh, I'll just introduce Sir. His back. Uh, yes. For he is a former president of Bangalore Stock Exchange and possibly the youngest president of any stock exchange in the world. Uh, transformed six organizations completely, which I have headed, which he has headed or been core part of thereafter in the past two decades. He is internationally certified trainer. His mission is to educate and empower financially 1 million Indians from the age of 18 to 80 through wealth mastery trainings. He is also a trainer, transformer, and accelerating human potential capital. He is head of Market Academy, CMA, conducts NISM certification courses on money, savings, investments, capital markets, trading, and serves the expert team, conducts workshops and delivers courses at reputed institutions, either as curriculum or as value-added offerings, both online and offline. So we welcome you, sir, for this session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for having me here. Uh, okay. It's indeed my pleasure and honor to be on this uh, August team. And uh, a very good hello to all the students as well who have tuned in for this budget. Yes. So, yes, uh, can I start? Yes, sir, please, sir. Please. Okay, so I'll just share my screen so that you know we can. Uh, mm -hmm. I've made a presentation. It was a long one. Now I've taken a smaller one. Let's see how fast I have to run through it now. So, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So, yeah. So, now this, this particular one, what we are looking at is basically we are looking at betting in on growth. And uh, that's exactly what we are looking at, union budget. All the bets this time have been purely on growth. And, uh, of course, capital market. Just a quick disclaimer because, you know, I'm not a SEBI registered advisor. So, whatever I say is, you know, purely educational. So, that's a mandatory one. So here we come, 2019, what do we see? We see, you know, we've got into the COVID situation slowly, as you can see, you know, the entire world gets enveloped by COVID. And uh, this was something in December, it starts and before we know it, all of us are wearing masks, everything has gone haywire. And there was one word which, you know, comes up, uh, which hit the economy very badly at that point of time, and that was disruption. Disruption where? Disruption in demand, disruption in supply, disruption across the world, you know, in travel, tourism, you name it, everywhere and every sector did have its own, you know, uh, share of uh, troubles which we got into. Not only that, there was something which also went wrong, jobs started going and as a result of that, India started, you know, the majority of Indians, the middle class, we could see started slipping into poverty. And that is where, you know, the government started stepping in, just like what it did everywhere else. You know, the economic indicators were all bad, whether, whether it's GDP, whether it's consumption, whether it's, you know, uh, the uh, jobs, whether there's new investment, whether PMI, whether IIP, every, every, every single, you know, uh, indicator was down at this point of time. The economy was literally out at that point of time. Now, from there, you know, we've learned one thing. And what is that one thing we've learned? That we have to live with COVID and that, you know, it's not over. Every time we feel it's over, something else comes up. Every time we feel it's over, something else comes up. So as a result of it, I think this time, you know, uh, the Honorable Finance Minister didn't mention the word pandemic because I get guess the pandemic is now endemic, as you can say. So what exactly is this budget? For me, this budget is nothing but a financial vaccine. Just like how you have a vaccine for humans, you have a vaccine for the economy. And when you go back and see, you know, you look at it, we are emerging from the pandemic. You know, it is the Amrit Kal, as they say, the next 25 years. I don't think uh, we could, you know, make it into uh, one year or two years because India is on a path and India is on a demographic path. And that path will lead for at least the next two decades of sustained development and growth. And this is one time which comes in every country's life, literally in every country's life cycle. And India is there. We've got strong demand, strong demographics, and you know, definitely this is going to give us the benefits of democracy as well. 
So what have we seen? We have seen that though there were state elections, this was not a populistic budget. As we can see, there was nothing changed, you know, in terms of income tax. What we are seeing, we are seeing capital spending on sunrise sectors. We are seeing, you know, what are those sunrise sectors? Something like energy transition, moving to green energy, clean energy, looking at climate change, drones, something which was never ever there even last year. What are we also seeing is there are two ways of addressing a problem. One is I, you know, give money to the, uh, the public and the public spends. Second way, the government collects the money and the government spends. So the government has decided to go the second way. You know, they will retain the money and they will push the demand. Literally, they will buy the goods and services. They will create the infrastructure by spending on infrastructure. You know, as uh, Mr. Sridhar mentioned, you know, 7.5% of GDP is not a small number at all in terms of capex. So what are we seeing? We are seeing that because of all this, the fiscal deficit for the current year is 6.4%. This, of course, is still high, but it's very much, you know, the need of the R, I guess, for a growing economy, especially one of the fastest growing economies that's India today. 60 lakhs jobs, which we are going to talk about the PLI scheme in Atmanirbhar Bharat. Yes, this 60 lakh jobs will not happen in one year. It will take a minimum, they say five years, but it could be, you know, maybe 10. So this is something which will also happen as a result of the PLI, as a result of, uh, you know, the uh, thing. At the same time, the PLI has the potential you know, for an additional production of 30 lakh crores, which is going to come in, in terms of production. So this is something which uh, the government is pushing. The government is pushing by way of PLI. The government is pushing by way of guarantees to the MSMEs. By The government is pushing by way of spending. So what are we looking at? We're looking at a GDP growth of 9.2% versus 7.3%. The nominal GDP growth is expected at 11%. The tax to GDP ratio is up 9.95 versus 9.75. So that shows that, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, more and more people are coming into the tax net and more and more people taxes are being collected. And the fiscal deficit has been revised to 6.9% for FY22. And of course, 6.4, as I told you, for FY23. The net borrowings are increasing. That's a sign of worry, definitely for the bond markets, you know, the, because 11.59 crores is something not small at all compared to 8.77 lakh crores. And the disinvestment, yes, the disinvestment is lower a bit at 65,000 crores in spite of LIC coming in. And we are looking at a huge valuation for LIC, but the government may just, you know, go in for a very, very small uh, uh, disinvestment. They may not want to uh, disinvest too much of LIC. Is That's what the figures actually are uh, suggesting. No changes in direct tax has already been covered. Crypto, yes, we are seeing 30% change in you know, I mean, 30% flat tax coming on digital virtual assets and a maximum, you know, 15% uh, cap on surcharge on long-term capital gains that's gone. So, you know, now it's only going to be a max of 15%. Apart from this, of course, the revised returns which are being allowed. So this gives an opportunity to anybody who's made a mistake, you know, to always go back and, you know, change their returns. What is most important are the major thrusts in infra. And what are those major thrusts we are looking at? We are looking at an infra push, right? As I mentioned, road network is going to be expanded by 25,000 kilometers. Multimodal logistic parks are coming in through a public-private partnership. Connectivity through one day bathroom, 400 trains, which in the next five years, 100 cargo terminals, ropeways, mass urban transport, etc. All this is going to be funded also because they are looking at to fund green infrastructure. We are looking at you know a green bond to fund it. And 1500 crore outlay, you know, for infras is going to be in the Northeast uh, Prime Minister's uh, Northeast Development Initiative. Apart from this, vibrant village program is going to be for border villages, you know, with sparse population and connectivity. So infrastructure is the one. And the PLI is going to be there for a strong, you know, 5G ecosystem, which is going to be there. N most important as, you know, the, you know, as we're moving from, uh, you know, to clean and green, we are looking at 19,500 crore of PLI coming in, and that also, you know, to enhance solar capacity. So they are talking of something, you know, coming up almost eight uh, 800 square kilometers in Bhuj, you know, which is going to add on to uh, capacity near the run of Kutch. So that's like 280 gigawatts of uh, power going to be there in the next five years. Gati Shakti has already been mentioned. All the seven engines of growth, you know, because connectivity is very important, as already mentioned. 
you know, so road railways, airports, ports, mass transport, waterways. The government is spending and the government is borrowing more, spending more. That's the mantra the government is going through. And they are trying to give a steroid boost to the economy by, by doing this. In the bargain, creating more jobs, you know, in the bargain, creating more employment and seeing that uh, more money is there finally in the hand of the people. The most important one this time has been, of course, the 1400 crore implementation of the Ken Betwa link project. It's an irrigation project, you know, two uh, tributaries of the river Yamuna, which crossed Jhansi. At that point of time, you're going to provide 62 lakh, uh, you know, people with drinking water, 130 megawatts of hydro power. Avas Yojana, 48,000 crore. So housing is going to be a main beneficiary. And then the, you know, pipes and all the companies in, in all the Hume pipes and plastic pipes have anything to do with uh, sanitation and water because of Nalit Sejal, that's going to do that. One station, one product, that's a great concept because see every place in India is we Indians are so universally and you know, so well diversified that you know, you have, you know, you get uh, wooden toys from Chanpatna, you get, you know, a Madhur, uh, uh, you know, uh, Vada and every place has got its own unique flavor to add to it. So just all you need to do is bring all those, you know, every place should have its own unique concept and bring that the uniqueness of India out and see that it goes through. Of course, the ropeway development project is also there. So what are we looking at? Two things, connectivity and inclusive growth. This is the push of it. How are they going to do it? The push is digital. How are they going to do it? Because data centers, energy storage systems, you know, like batteries and all that are given infrastructure status. Very important because what is going to happen is earlier data centers were not so you know, critical, but today with the world going digital, you know, and everybody sitting at home and, you know, with all these pandemic issues, et cetera, in the past, it's imperative that, you know, digital is given the right thrust and it's done perfectly. We've got a digital ecosystem, you know, which the government is going to make a portal for all, you know, so we're going to have 75 digital banking units by scheduled banks. Digital rupee, yes, this is going to be another thing. It's just going to be not an asset. It's just going to be a currency, which is going to be you know, possibly uh, fungible, which is going to be by the Reserve Bank. I presume and I suppose that you know, this is one move. You know, Post-demonetization, the government is looking at mopping up you know, some money in the future in terms of black money. Maybe, maybe this could be the digital currency. Five years, 10 years later, the government could come out with you know, uh, something like don't spend uh, more than 10,000 rupees, you know, in physical currency or don't deposit more than physical currency of X amount. And why don't they promote digital currency? So we don't know this, but this could be one of the thrusts, one of the, you know, hidden agendas towards the Amrit Kal, so-called Amrit Kal, what we are looking at now. Apart from this digital virtual assets, yes, this is something, you know, where cryptos come in. They've never used the word crypto, you know, because the government stand on crypto itself is, uh, rather uh, gray, shall I say. So we don't know that for sure. So, but what we are seeing is that, you know, the crypto assets in the country, digital virtual assets, including non-fungible tokens, et cetera, has moved from 200 million to 40 billion. Can you imagine 20,000% growth in one year? And that's what's caught the eye of the government. And the government has decided to, you know, tax all the digital virtual assets. All the post offices also will be connected to core banking. And that's uh, all the thrust on digital. In the finance, you know, the capex outlay is going up, you know, by 35.4%. Uh, and we are looking at 1 lakh crore financial assistance going to states, which include 50-year-old interest-free bonds. IBC, that is, you know, the uh, insolvency and bank bankruptcy code. Amendments are going to come in. They're looking at international arbitration center coming at Gibbs City. They're looking at CPACE, which is nothing but corporate exits. You know, uh, you know they're making a particular program for that and, uh, you know, see that sick companies can go out of the system fast apart from drones you know semiconductors genomics that's where the government's thrust is and disinvestment of course as i told you has been scaled down because they will give a smaller portion of the lic and unlike what everybody else was expecting agri push has been there they've increased it to 2.37 lakh crores the drones are going to be here in terms of crop assessment and digitization of land records that's something which is very important i'll cover it later Chemical free farming is going to be there, five kilometer wide corridor of the Ganga. So we are looking at organic farmer, which, which is going to come up and Nabad is going to come up with cap, you know, blended capital finance for startups and agri and rural enterprises. 
so we are seeing this apart from this on the education front we find that you know the prime ministers e vidya they are expanding channels from 12 to 200 skill development labs and virtual development labs are coming up you know to make simulated work environment and they are going to develop high high quality e content you know for the future and through uh, digital teachers on the health front yes with the pandemic there a, a sort of a registry is going to come up the national digital health ecosystem is going to be rolled out and the national tele medicine mental health program is going to be rolled out so these are some of the things which are going to be there two lakh anganwadis are going to be upgraded now by upgrading these are anganwadis these are nothing but you know primary child health care centers you know in villages they are going to be called saksham anganwadis with better infrastructure clean energy audio visual aids you know for child development and of course we are looking at uh, in terms of green initiatives the battery swapping policy that's something which is something really good and uh, setting up of charging stations 19500 pro pli for uh, the uh, solar modules then msme is being covered because msme is genuinely require this assistance and i guess the government is going to address this particular issue now you know where they are going to be given ecgc or emergency credit link guarantee scheme and which they want to increase from 50000 crores to 5 lakh crores so money is coming in the hands of business rather than money is coming in the hands of the public that's the difference what is going to happen of course in terms of green unblended fuel is going to be up by 2 rupees this is going to benefit sugar companies uh, you know because they are going to be manufacturing ethanol etc so from that angle you know with a uh, price differential people could uh, be using uh, blended fuel more and then what are we looking at the other parts is in the terms of defense we are looking at 68% of you know the capital procurement you know now the brahmos or the other missiles etc what we are seeing even a country like philippines is buying uh, defense equipment from us now so we are looking at 68% coming from india e passports with chips are coming in land records very important because a lot of properties are in you know in dispute so once you can do this this will unlock huge amount of value especially for the you know rural folk where there are always land issues to be there and yes in terms of crypto and digital assets it's flat taxed at 30% i will not cover the exact details on that but you know whatever you do whether even if you transfer it or you gift it or whatever you are going to be you know paying 30% or the recipient will pay 30% either way so with that you know i'll just wrap up this particular one you know with uh, giving you the total fiscal deficit being now you know uh, close to 6.4 versus 6.9 as i said and yes though the expenditure is up by 30 you know the expenditure is going to go up by 39.45 lakh crores versus the income what we are expecting so we are going to be with a deficit but i guess this is how the markets are and this is how it is and uh, on the whole this was a steroid budget a budget on steroids targeting businesses targeting green targeting solar targeting everything else but leaving the public high and dry so given a choice you know i i would have given this budget maybe 7 out of 10 this already what the government's thrust is i'm not seeing anything uh, unique other than you know what they've been reiterating on the good part is they've spelled it out they've laid the road map and yes the next 25 years you know till the amrit kal definitely belong to india and with that uh, i rest my case thank you very much thank you hauja sir uh, really it was interesting you are also for the budget you are also expecting there will be amrut kal in future uh, no doubt everything looks very good in the paper let us hope that they are all implemented and they are uh, to the mark uh, as you said product linked uh, investments is good and demand driven market we have to have they are going green and geographical identi identification tag that every a uh, station will have one product to sell so with that is again a good thing and of course inclusive growth and one good thing what i uh, was it was that what you said is more of the uh, what you call as black money so we the digitalization already lot of lot has been done now uh, transparency has come into our uh, uh, what you call as banking system as such but still that this may add for that we may the parallel economy may become so then your then money in hands with the businessmen that is a good uh, thing which you said sir that if it is there with the businessmen that is what is required investment employment income these are the things which are going to grow uh, thank you very much sir thank you
with us. Yeah, Jagdish sir, can you take this? Uh... Yeah. So the question is that budget promotes more of uh, you know income in the hands of businesses, and uh, basically, who's an entrepreneur? <laughs> an entrepreneur is a job provider. So look at it from this angle: that every entrepreneur, instead of giving, you know, that there's that old adage that you know we want to feed a man, give him a fish, but you want to you know make him. Uh, self-sufficient, teach them fishing. So what are you trying to do here? You're trying to address it by addressing the businesses, the entrepreneurs, because if the entrepreneurs are there, automatically employment is there. If the employment uh, employees are there and you know employment is there, automatically there is, you know, indirectly uh, the public is benefiting. So definitely, yes, there were two, two choices for the government. What one choice, give it. Hello. I think there is some technical... That could be, possibly. That by putting more money in the hands of the public, again, one more thing, you can fuel up inflation. Already inflation is something we are looking at and is already at, at uh, high peaks, not only in India, but worldwide. And it's a great, great, you know, grave concern, shall I say. So because your real growth is, you know, dependent on inflation and if inflation eats it up, everything is lost. So that's the reason, I guess, you know, the government is promoting, you know, that by giving it to the businesses, who in turn generate the employment and keep livelihoods together so that it has a trigger effect. Well, not only a one effect, but a domino effect. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jagdish, sir, a question by Deepak. Yeah, Deepak, um, yes. If we continue with uh, real uh, GDP growth, how long do you think it will take India to cross into you know, the $5 trillion economy? Uh, frankly, looking at the way India is today, looking at the per capita income in India, Looking at our GDP growth of 9.2%, I see that you know maybe in 10 years' time we shall be there, and uh, we will be there for sure. Come hail, rain, sunshine, because to me India today is unstoppable. India is on a path which, uh, uh, if I had to give you a small analogy, uh, what Japan was in the 70s, what US was in the 80s, you know what uh, China was in the late 90s and 2000s. And maybe the tiger economy is uh, in the early 90s. That's what India is at today. We were 20 years late, but when we are, we are not going to go back from definitely from here. Looking at it, secondly, the capex cycle. Most of the companies today have already completed their capex. They are working at 70, 80, 90 percent capacity. So their capacities are full. Demand, as we have already seen with the pandemic uh, being there, you know, and in respect of the pandemic. In January itself, we have crossed 1.4 lakh crores in, uh, I mean, uh, of uh, GDP, uh, sorry, of uh, GST. So when you look at it from that angle, India is truly unstoppable. And Deepak, you're staying at the right place. Being a student today, you're going to see the best of golden India. The Amrit Kal, the word Kal doesn't mean just only a year. It actually means a time period. So the Amrit Kal is definitely ahead of you. The next 20 years for India, I mean, for India is absolutely there and nothing, nobody can stop it. <laughs> nothing like that. In fact, uh, you just added on, just look at it. You know, we were 35 lakh accounts, you know, uh, DMAT accounts uh, three years back. And today we are almost four crore accounts. Yeah. So look at it. What has happened? FIIs, who are the biggest dominating for, uh, force today, you know, have withdrawn 41,000 crores, you know, in the month of January alone. But our markets have actually gone up after that. So you look at it that the Indian population, as you rightly mentioned, is coming of age. People have become more uh, you know, aware. They've been more empowered because of technology. And uh, thanks to technology, to be very honest, and thanks to the education, which technology and the news and everything which people have, they are truly empowered. And truly, we are looking at a golden tomorrow for this country. The young population of our country is an They adult. are absolutely at the right place at the right time. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm really very happy to thank each one because uh, we were looking out for the experts and we could manage them very quickly as well. And thanks, uh, Mr. Jira, uh, for accepting our invitation and being here. And really, it was very good to understand whatever you said. And I'm sure all of our students would have got an overview about what exactly the budget is. And uh, Rakshit, of course, I would like to finish off with both of you and then I would move on to Jagdish sir. So Rakshit, uh, uh, it's, it was really very nice and your uh, overall view that you gave about each point was wonderful. 
I could see that you could connect with the real application part of the budget because though we read about the budget, then the application is something very important. So you could uh, exactly connect relate it. it and tell where exactly it is going to be implemented and how it will be implemented. And that was very good. I'm sure all of our students would have learned a lot through your uh, points as well. And Jagdish sir, with your wonderful presentation of the PPTs, it was really good. Uh, we could see the visuals which was catching our attention, plus also the points in the visuals was really very interesting. And uh, you had uh, very clearly put across all the points, all uh, the sectors under uh, each headings. It was really very good. Thanks a lot for uh, being here with us and accepting our invitation thanks, yeah. as well. And uh, so we look forward further also for getting associated with you for other activities. And uh, Kiran Bindu, sir, I had no words to say, of course. Uh, you have been rocking all around and you have been giving us the overall picture. You could relate with the students' perspective and tell them how they analyze that 10th marks card and how they perform, which is a reality which happens in the real life. So that way I'm sure students would have got connected with the way you presented about the budget. And overall, thanks a lot to each and every panelist who were here because we had a very good understanding of the budget. And uh, I would not fail in my duty if I don't thank uh, Dr. Anuradha yes. for uh, being the moderator of the session. And she has been very active member of this budget discussion all through. And she raised all her points very well as well. Thanks a lot, ma'am. And uh, I would like to thank our uh, director, madam, Dr. Mamsa Nagabushanam for giving us this opportunity. And she's been the motivating force and the inspiration for us to take on with all these activities. Thanks a lot, ma'am. And uh, I will not be failing in my duty if I don't thank my finance team, all my team members from the department who have worked uh, uh, hard for getting this event happening. Uh, Professor Jeevita, as well as Professor Kumuda, Rajwe sir, and Sanjay Chari sir, and Professor Jai Shri Kovda, who have been the backbone for the whole event. And uh, definitely, I would like to thank the management, our other faculty members, our students who had uh, been here, who participated and patiently listened to the whole uh, deliberation. Thanks a lot. And uh, we shall meet again to discuss further, to analyze what has happened a few uh, days later. Thanks a lot. We also thank our uh, computer lab people for always facilitating with this uh, sessions. Thank you all. Thank you, Anuradha, ma'am. And my apologies for getting carried away with the currency depreciation case. <laughs> it's okay, no sir. So that is how it should be. It yeah. should be a discussion. Yeah. We have our own views, always. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you.